Zan Zapt here in Scottsdale, Arizona, um, and it's launch day for LifePro, and I am very grateful that LifePro has asked me to help them launch two of their new products that will be on their website officially today. Um, if you're new to LifePro, welcome. I hope you uh, find some value in the information I'm going to give you because LifePro is an amazing company that I've been working with for over a year and a half. A little bit about me, uh, I am a fitness trainer, I'm a yoga practitioner, I teach therapeutic yoga primarily, and also a Pilates practitioner, I do health coaching as well. I work with active aging adults, basically people about 50 to my oldest clients, 93, and these are folks just like you that you know just want to stay strong and healthy and fit and have really you know, full lives. And let's face it, you know, life happens, issues in the tissues, and we can't always do what our brain wants us to do. But Life Pro, this amazing company that Joel and Abe started, I, I'm not sure how long ago, but that I've been with them for a year and a half, has brought to market some amazing world-class recovery products. And now they're offering more. They're offering products for sports recovery, uh, wellness recovery, but strength training and endurance training, as well as vibration therapy, which is how I was introduced to them on vibration platforms. Today, I've got two new products, as I mentioned. I'm going to be showing and demoing the Infinity Plus Home Gym and also the Yoga Swirl, Swirl, Swirl Yoga Wheels. And oh, thank you. I just saw someone saying they're three or four years old. Man, if they've been around three or four years, just imagine in the next three or four years all the cool products that we will be having in our homes to use. Um, thank you so much, Joel and Abe, and all the people at Life Pro. So, again, um, today it's Friday. I'm here from Scottsdale, Arizona. The name of my company is Live Fit, and I want to introduce to you these two new products. Let me show you first the Infinity system. This is the Infinity Plus Home Gym. And here you go. It's 13 pounds. And I'm, I've got it hooked on my shoulder in a bag. This is a home gym. And let's face it, you know, COVID's happening. And um, I don't know where you are in the country. I hope you're safe. I hope you're feeling really healthy and strong. But, you know, um, not everyone's going to the gym these days. And not everyone wants to afford a gym membership. But you can have a gym right at home, or you can take it with you if you're traveling. If you are traveling to visit family and friends, or you have a seasonal residence, um, here is your gym. So I'm going to put this aside, and I'm going to take show you all the pieces, parts to the system. Weighs 13 pounds, 26 pounds. Did I say 13 pounds? Let me see. It weighs, let me look. It weighs... 13 pounds, I did say that. I have to look at my cheat sheet notes. 13 pounds, okay? So I'm gonna set this aside and show you all the pieces first. The first thing that we have is the platform itself. Now, you probably wanna know right from the get-go how much. We're, because it's launch day, it's a special price. Normally $299.99, $109.99. A home gym for that much money. Yeah, it is light and it feels it's easy to do. So here's here is the training platform. Okay, it is a fold up platform. So it was in this bag, folds up, and there's a little Velcro piece that keeps it together. Okay, so this is the platform. What you're going to see on here are these little pulley wheels right here. They roll. I'll, I'll explain all these parts, but I'm just going to kind of point out to you. You'll also see a bunch of different colors. This is where all the push-up handles go. And I will explain that in a minute. On the back, are, you'll also notice numbers. I'm gonna try to get to my camera. You'll see these numbers, eight, five, one, seven. So these numbers all mean something as well. There's also some little holes uh, besides these numbers. And that's where your, your um, rubber stoppers are gonna go. Okay, so this is the platform, super light and easy. It will hold up a weight up to 265 pounds. So if anything under 265 pounds, you're good to go. So besides my training platform, which is very sturdy, I have a mat, which you saw rolled up. I've got my mat that I can put on here if I'm kneeling 
on the platform or on the floor. I have the mid carpeting right now. And those little train holes, uh, is, you'll be putting some rubber stoppers in. Now, I'm not gonna put these rubber stoppers in right now, but they're these little rubber, they, they protect from the floor from the platform skidding. But a little heads up, once you put them in, it's very difficult to fold this back up. So if you're planning on transporting, just know you're gonna to have to take the stoppers up. So save this little baggie it comes with so you can always have your stoppers all in free. Okay, so besides the platform, I've got two resistance bands that are red, and these bands are 46 inches long, and it's uh, equivalent to about 29 pounds of resistance. I love these bands, basically because of the covering. This is a cover that's, I think the fabric is what they also use for uh, life preservers. So very safe, uh, the, the, the rubber band inside won't dry out so quickly. If it does snap, it's like almost like a safety guard that you won't get hit in the eye. So this safety bands, perfect bands. I use a lot of these kind of, they're called slastic bands. That's the trademark name on them. I use slastic bands a lot with my clients. So I've got two, and these are uh, 46 inches long and they're 29 resistance, 20 pounds in resistance. It's hard to equate weight to resistance, but you're talking about 29 pounds, which is pretty significant. Then besides these bands, I have two blue bands. Now these are smaller and they are stronger. These bands are um, 28 inches long and the resistance on these is uh, 20, 22 pounds, I believe. Okay, so we've got two different resistance bands here. So four bands. It also comes with handles. So I've got two handles. And what's cool, cool about the handles, besides the fact they're a nice rubber grip, they're not plastic, there's three little slots or three little uh, D-rings so you can adjust the length, depending on your height or the amount of resistance you have. We have ankle or wrist straps, and they're nice and padded. They've got a nice, I, I, I'm wearing black so you can't see. They've got a nice pad coating, it's Velcro, so that it comes around the wrist or ankle or feet with a uh, D-ring and something to hook uh, two. Okay. I also have push-up handles and I will demonstrate to you how to easily place these in the platform and, and different positions you'll use. It comes with four carabiners. These little guys will hook your handles or your ankle or wrist straps to your bands. We have a two millimeter steel bar. And the cool thing about this bar, because it's portable, you simply screw it together and then you have your training bar. This only weighs a couple pounds. But what's gonna be nice about this is it attaches, you have the attachments to attach to your band. So if you wanna be doing any kind of arm work or uh, squats or whatnot, you've got your band. Now this is the coolest part. And I, I am tickled to think about this because uh, this is the ab roller wheel. Now, normally, I don't know about you, I mean, I teach Pilates, I have a really strong core. I don't brag about it, but I really am strong. I can't do an ab wheel. But with the resistance band attached to this bar, successfully, I can do an ab rollout. So if you're new to fitness, know that Resistance band training is probably the best way to start. And, I, and I'm saying that from based on 24 years of experience, that most of the clients I have been dealing with, again, active aging adults that are strong, they're fit, but we've got issues in our tissues, shoulder injuries, wrist injuries, maybe grip injuries with your hands. And um, weight training can sometimes be stressful to your joints. What I love about resistance band training is that it actually strengthens more of the connective tissue, ligaments, tendons. Uh, it's safer, um, let me say, uh, that's yeah, safer for, for joint mobility. Uh, if you're bone on bone, and I deal with a lot of bone on bone issue, people with issues with that, um, weight training can be hard on that kind of joint. But with resistance, there's always pressure in the joint and it doesn't feel 
as um, painful. Um, and it's much more doable. So when I strengthen your joints through resistance band training, then we can add weights to it and voila, you're, you're stronger because your joints are stronger. Um, yeah, and it's just great, uh, Debbie just said, it's, it's nice that it's small storage because you can you can put this together, you can take it inside the bed, put the system together, you're done, clean it up, put it to the side and it's neatly stored right there so it's not an eyesore, if, especially in your small spaces. My room, this is my virtual training room that I teach my clients virtually in. And it's about, uh, I don't know, 12 by 15. So you can see I'm just like in about a corner of it. That's all the space I really need. Okay, let me tell you about one other feature we have in here. The other uh, tool or component that comes with this is a door anchor, okay? Now, I don't know if you've ever worked with a door anchor, but I have been training with door anchors uh, for quite a while. And I'm gonna demonstrate exercises you can do. So if you are traveling and you go, I oh, know I don't wanna take my platform, but I'm gonna grab my bands, I'm gonna grab my handles, you know, I put it in a smaller bag. If you have any life for products, they all come with beautiful carrying bags, grab one of those carrying bags. You can use your door anchor and your bands and you are good to go. So it's very, very cool. So, um, Let's begin in a moment. I just want to talk about two more or three more things else that I'll actually demonstrate. Please let me know where you're coming from, where you're where you're looking, at, where you're uh, viewing from. Hello, Facebook family. Hello, at Instagram, and I think we're on YouTube too. So we're live right now here in Scottsdale, Arizona, for Zanzapt. And um, Life Pro is one of the companies I've been working with for a year, right before COVID, year plus, right. Um, what I found with Life Pro is that so anyway, Debbie takes your Rumblex with you. You know what? I went to California last year and took my Rumblex, and then I bought a Waver Mini, and I took that this year. But you know what? If you're traveling, you gotta have it, right? <laughs> Can't don't leave home without a vibration platform. So Life Pro uh, always has some beautifully. Uh, ex um, let's try that again. Life Pro always gives you a really great training manual. Manual. It tells you about the product, troubleshooting, uh, good instruction on how to use it. Uh, let's see, wrong one. Um, what I love about this user manual, it's probably a, thicker than most of them because it really helps you as a novice or a seasoned fitness enthusiast to know how to set up your platform for various exercises. Uh, they will show you, and I'm going to give you kind of look different exercises. They'll let you know if it's a beginner or an intermediate and suggested bands to use. Um, they also, and I'm going to find this page, I hope quickly. I'm an anatomy geek. I just love the body. Before I graphic, before I was in graphic um, in fitness, I was in graphic arts and and advertising, and I used to do a lot of life drawing. So I love anatomy. I like to know, and I like to teach my clients what muscles they're actually incorporating, what they're strengthening, what they're using. So um, yeah, another Life Pro Genius Home Equipment, absolutely. So I want to know what we're working on. So they've color coded it, which is really nice because when you look at our platform is color coded to know what we're working with when we're doing our push ups. So, um, great user manual. And let's talk about customer service. When you get this product or any product from Life Pro, you've got 14 days to register it and you have a lifetime warranty. Now, not many companies stand behind that stuff. And um, fortunately, I haven't really had to use them for anything. And I own a lot of Life Pro products. But they stand behind their product, and the products are really made really well that they're not even worried about. It. That's why they can stand behind it. So um, customer service support, we also have for you that are new to Life Pro, we have a YouTube channel with lots of videos from April. There's uh, um, um, some from, from Amber. There's videos from me. There's videos from other parts of the team. There is a VIP Facebook page that we all support each other on. I'm jumping on there all the time, answering questions as well as their customer service. So, shoo, a lot of information. That I'm already 15 minutes into this live and I haven't demonstrated the, pro the, the product yet. So let me dive into it, okay? So we're gonna first um, 
work on, I think I'm going to work on the push ups. I'm going to get my hair out of the way so you can see what's going on. And I'm going to move the product a little bit at an angle so you can see what's going on here. Okay, push ups. If you're new to push ups, let me tell you, I love using handles rather than wrists. Now, I've got pretty strong, flexible wrists, but you might not. So if you're using a handle, you're going to get more strength because you're really incorporating the pushing muscles. What I love about this platform is that we can start wide and you'll see on the platform, I'm gonna pick up and show you in a moment. It's the blue uh, color, which tells me I'm gonna be working my chest. I'm gonna put my mat down below. I'm on carpeting, but if you're not on carpeting, get padding. And I'm gonna stay on my knees because I'm strong, but I'm not that strong when it comes to wide push-ups. I'm gonna come on down, you know, lean into it, Tuck the tailbone, squeeze the glutes, and you're going to bend and straighten. Always looking about three to four feet ahead of you, and you're going to open and close the chest. So that's your wide push-up. You can do it on your toes as well. All you have to do is press down on the platform, lift up, and your handle comes out. We're going to go to a narrower push-up, which is probably more my speed. Even though I'm broad, it's just a little bit this closer in, the more core and... Um, a little bit easier, okay? So shoulders are back, belly is tucked, pulled in, and you're gonna come down and up. So there's your chest presses there. We're gonna move it in again, triceps, okay? So I go to the green, and I'm bringing my elbows in, and I'm gonna come down and up, and now I'm working triceps here. And I'm not gonna do all, there's 10 different, 10 different configurations on this push-up platform for you to do. So I will do just one more. I'm gonna go into, once again, green, a diagonal. So this is called a diamond push-up. And I'm gonna slide this out here. I'm gonna come out to my toes for this one. We're gonna come down and up. Okay, so that's your diamond tricep push-up. Okay, I can whip out a few on my toes. So let me just show you what I've done here. I'm gonna move this around. Just to give you a visual, because I know my camera's a bit far away. So you see these beautiful colors? You can see this diagram of this person, and the red goes to where the angle is of the, the bars are, the blue to the blue, yellow to yellow. And now you know where you're targeting. I'm wondering if there are any studies Provided vibration is beneficial to the body. There's lots of studies about vibration therapy that's beneficial to the body. You can join in our, our VIP group and, and you'll they'll share the, they'll the studies with you. Yeah, the push-up positions are very cool. Um, there's one for the traps. I'm not a big person for traps, but if you're a football player, you want to work those traps. If you're playing defense, most of the time I got to get people out of their traps. But there is a way to strengthen your traps on here. Okay, so that's just the push-ups. What I'm gonna do now is take out the take off the handle. You don't need them for the rest of the exercises. So I'm putting these aside. And these are the clamps that attach the resistance bands. So as I mentioned, there are numbers here uh, that correspond opposite of each other. Here's sevens. The eights here, so I'm going to go to um, the sevens. Okay, I'm going to plug them in. We're going to start with the green, uh, the, the green, the red bands. These are longer. They are 46 inches. I'm going to put it through the pulley. I want to make sure that the clamp is firmly attached. I've got a lot of exercises to show you. I was telling my backstage support, I thought it'd be 20, 20 minutes, but you know what? I just talked for 15 minutes, so this might go a while. So hang in with me, but you can ask me any questions because I have another product to show you. So let's, I'm going to go quickly through this. Okay, I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to make sure it's secure. I'm going to take, uh, I think before I take my bar, I'm going to attach the handles here, okay? Taking the two handles, take these two of the four carabiners. 
So I'm gonna do some shoulder presses. You can do some balance training with resistance bands too. That's kind of cool for, to work on stabilization. So I put my straps in there. Slide them in. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about shoulder work. My opinion and some of the chiropractors and doctors I've worked with. Shoulder presses to be effective in working your deltoid below the joint, above the joint. You start going up ahead, you're in your neck, you're in your traps. So you don't have to go that far. So I'm starting my shoulder press with my elbows below the joint and I'm gonna press up above my joint. So that's the range of motion I wanna work on. You see, I went to the longest band. Now, if I wanna make it heavier, I just can go, I can incrementally, as I get stronger, work my way up, okay? So we can start there. And know that that's a good place to start with. Then as I get stronger, or as you get stronger, not that I am stronger, but as you get stronger doing this, you can make it harder. And then as you make it harder, you start challenging yourself with just not a bake a plain old vanilla shoulder press. You add on some balance work with it. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Don't be surprised if we don't start creating some videos like we did with the yoga on the vibration platform. Hopefully Joe will have us girls and guys make some videos for you. So now you can see how much heavier this is. Now there's a lot more work involved. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some balance to this. I'm gonna kick back and up. Single leg, now I'm working my glutes as well as my shoulders, or I can just leave my leg up. I can push it out. I can add squats to it. I can add a lunge, I can step off, lunge up. So I just changed a basic shoulder press into a whole bunch of different exercises. If you're not very creative with your bands, and you know, when I first started using bands, I didn't know what the heck to do with them. You can find a lot of things on YouTube, but you know, ask us and we'll come up with some training videos for you. So I'm not using the handles, I'm actually holding the bands. I'm gonna go into an upright row. Crossovers are front rows. One of my favorites here. I can add a squat and pull up. Okay, so if you don't want to use the handles, we use the bar. And let me just go ahead and quickly change out to show you the bar. So that's the beauty of this home gym. You don't have to have a lot of weights around. You don't have to have a lot of barbells around. A lot of things that um, take up space because this does it on the platform, by the way, I didn't give you the dimensions on that. The platform itself is about 36 inches wide, or wide, 17 inches across and two inches high. Okay, so here we go. Now I've got the barbell, weighs a couple pounds, not a big deal. Okay, I can go into a bicep curl here. And this is pretty easy, this, this amount of resistance for me. So if I want to just, why is this a little different? Something's different. One's higher than the other. Let me just check to see if I'm on the same. Yep, I am good. This feels different. I'm just off. <laughs> there. You know what, I'm off. <laughs> it's not, it's me. Find the, find the center rows. Okay, so you can make more resistance, less resistance on, on this by changing your base. We can go into a shoulder press, come back down, and now we've got our squat. Push up and down. Adding that resistance into it. I feel a little cockeyed. Am I there? I am. I'm looking in the camera as I do this. It's going to be more centered. There we go. <laughs> So there's my squats and my shoulder presses. Okay. I'm gonna move on because I want to show you a variety of different things. All right. We're gonna go from here into the blue bands. They're shorter. So that means your range of motion is gonna be quite cut down quite a bit. I'm gonna use them for 
the ab roller first. Because I can't tell you guys how excited I was to actually be able to roll out. My significant other's quite quite strong, and he's got an ab roller. He just whips out those, those bad boys, and I can't do it. But when this came around, I showed him, look, I can. So we're going to put this wheel on. Just let it slide on there. Maybe. Oh, there you are. Find the right hole. There you go. Okay. Put it in. So there's your ab roller. Now you can adjust your hand position. So the ab roller that you normally see is very narrow. A little wider base of support on this is going to give me this help I need to push up. We're going to turn this to the side. I'm going to put my red bands out of the way. Put everything out of the way here. And we're going to attach. See, I'm going to attach this to the fours. It really is super easy to, to switch these bands out. I got to it's super easy to do. Okay. The band. I should take it to the sixes. So what I would suggest when you start working with this, you follow the manual, try some of the exercises suggested, and then you'll work up a program and you can mark down what your settings were for the underside where the clamps go, and that way you'll, you'll, you'll have it. You won't have to leave it to your memory. Oops. So I'm going to flip it around. Make sure they're in there. They're in there. Flipping them around. Attach the wheel. Have any of you guys ever worked with a nap roller? It's wicked. But I, you know, one of my favorite exercises to do, um, or one of my favorite exercises to teach my clients are planks. Generally, we start on the forearms and then we work our way to the hands, depending on your wrist function. And planks will work everything your legs, your glutes, your core, your shoulders, your triceps. So you add the wheel to it and it's another dimension. Okay, I'm going to put the pad on here to protect knees. And by the way, I'm going to give you a training tip right now that a lot of people don't realize. You know, if you've got issues in your knees, folding over the pad and just letting your kneecaps hang over, you have about a half inch, quarter inch, so your kneecaps are pressing into the platform. And that padding will help to not to not produce any more pain in your knees. So just roll up anything instead of just being flat on it, roll it up and get that extra lift and your knees are off the hard surface. Okay, here we go. Take a breath in, when you come to here, you're gonna exhale and push it out, maybe not. And back in. Drive it up, so I'm sliding on my knee pad. And out we go, there we go. Now take it out and reach. I'm sliding today for some reason. Hmm. Let me take it back here and push. Oh, I'm out of the screen too. I want to. I want to show this off to you guys. I'm really proud of this. <laughs> it's the little things in life. Okay. Push out. These are hard, but that resistance is doable for me. And the more I do, the more successful I feel. <laughs> and that's your ab roller. Oh, that's wicked stuff. <laughs> okay, enough showing off. So from here, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you a few Pilates moves. I've been teaching Pilates for over 20 years on equipment and on the mats. 
you can do some Pilates work on your platform. Okay, move my bar aside. I'm going to show you about three exercises that we can recreate using the ankle straps. Now, instead of putting them on the ankles, I am going to, uh, actually someone just said it wouldn't slide. The platform wasn't sliding, I was sliding. <laughs> the platform was very solid. It was operator error. I was sliding on my fabric. I probably need a little more, a little less resistance because it was pretty hard to push out. But the platform actually stays. If you put the rub, I have carpeting and um, it's not sliding. If you are on regular uh, wood floor or um, if you're on linoleum, all that, you probably want those rubber stoppers for sure. So when we work our legs in Pilates, we have feet in straps. So I'm literally going to put these straps around my feet rather than my ankles. And I'll show you what I mean. So you see, I put them around my the arch of my feet. They're nice and padded so they feel snug. Then I'm going to attach the carabiner to the blue handles. Now, this these blue bands are heavy, as I mentioned. And I'm going to scoot off the platform. You can either be on your forearms or you can be on your back and support your head. I'm going to do that first. This is some frog work. I'm going to push out and back in. I'm working my rectus abdominis, my inner thighs, and my glutes. Resistance bands hold the weight of my legs up so it makes it very doable as I do this exercise. Great core training. We can go ahead and do single leg scissors. We can do circles. These are tough, folks, and they are definitely working. Hitting the core, hitting the inner thighs, hitting the outer thighs. I'm going to reverse those circles. My back is pressed into the platform. I've got a really good support here, but it's heavy on the floor. And there you go. So I just demonstrated a couple ab and core exercises using the straps on the feet. You can place them on your ankles, do some donkey kicks. And I'll just do one to show you what, that, what I mean by that. Take this one off. And I'm just gonna place my hands on the ground and I'm going to have that strap inside the knees. I'm going to push straight out and back, keeping the knee bent. I, I can put my hands on the platform to take a little pressure off my wrists there and kick back. Glutes, abs, hamstrings, the whole kick and move. So those are just a few of the leg exercises. You can stand up and do some balance work here. You might want to have something handy so that when you're kicking across until you feel strong enough to let go of the wall. I always keep a slight bend in my knee when I'm doing this kind of work, not to stress the kneecap out. So there you go. I did inner thighs, I did butt. Yep, it's all there. Your home gym, the infinity box plus workout set. So let's see what I've covered. I've covered the push-ups, the platform with the bar, with the handles, I showed you the ab roller. I showed you the legs and straps. I still have to show you the door. So um, again, really cool. Uh, two hundred and ninety nine dollars is the uh, manufactured suggested retail price, and the launch price is one hundred nine ninety nine. So for a hundred bucks, you're getting all that equipment. I'm going to kind of tidy house a little bit. I'm going to move my camera around so you can see what's going on next. I will be using the blue bands, which again are a little bit shorter. And uh, you make the resistance as hard as you need. If you're starting out on this, if, this is, if you're new to your exercise journey, 
I want to strongly recommend that you take it easy, just like on the vibration platform. You know, you don't have to do a lot of reps. The reason I love teaching Pilates, uh, it's because of the quality of the move, not the quantity. I remember uh, when I was having some knee issues years ago, uh, like 20 years ago. Yeah, I was 44 then. That was 20 years ago. Um, my The knee specialist said, you know, Rose, you only have so many bends in your knee knees. Use them wisely. So I took that under advice <laughs> and I'm very conscious about form. Form is everything, posture is everything in your exercises. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take my two blue bands. I'm gonna take the door anchor. I'm gonna set everything aside here. Here's my door anchor, okay. So this is the door anchor. I'm gonna put it to the side so you see it. It's a piece of foam and straps. And I'm gonna move my camera around because I want you to be able to see what's going on here. Oops. This, way. this is when I need a cameraman. <laughs> okay, so first of all, make sure I have the carabiners. Hang on with me guys for a second. Give me a moment here to get together. We're first going to put the anchor in the door. Now you have options. You can put it at the very top of the door. Now this is just a regular good old door. You know, I want to make sure that no one can open it. So you lock it once you secure it. You can put your anchor up here. You can put it in the hinge here, the hinge here or below, depending on where you're going to work from. And I've taught classes strictly using a resist, uh, an anchor of resistance bands and that's full body workout. You can do a cardio workout, you can do a strength workout, you can do a stretch workout. So right today, I am going to put my band, I think I'll put it above the door. Actually, I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna put it in the corner. I'm gonna shut my door, okay? And then from here, I'm gonna add my two hooks in one part of my band. The two carabiners. It's kind of a weird word, isn't it, carabiner? And there's one. I'm going to add it in here. So what I'm going to demonstrate are some chest presses, chest flies with lunges, and just the opposite of that, uh, some back rows and some triceps. Here's the other one. Let me grab two more carabiners. I just happen to have some handy. And we're going to put the handles on. You would think that you're taking the door off, but you know, I, as I said, I've worked with anchors, door anchors, and it never wrecks the door. It's really efficient. When you work with resistance band training, it's always good to find your maximum line of pull. And um, as I said, you can be sure that because you have a coating of slastics, uh, canvas cover over that you're not gonna have to worry about the band snapping off and hitting you in the face or the eye or anything. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just giving a little tug to make sure I'm good. I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna find my line of pull. Look how I'm leaning into this. It's supported my body weight. I weigh about 115, 117 pounds on a, on a good day, okay? So I'm pushing my weight into it. Now what I wanna do is if I stand up, there's a little more resistance, there's a little more resistance, a little more resistance, okay? We're gonna go into a, a lunge with a chest press. So I'll step back and I'll punch forward and drive it out. Now I'm driving my whole body weight into this. I'm gonna bring my camera down so you can see just a little bit more of the action of this move. Okay. Push out. Now this becomes very aerobic very quickly. And I just changed my grip. I was white knuckling it. I don't even have to hold on too far with this. Elbows back and punch. There's no resistance and I push into the resistance. chest presses with a lunge. Lunges forward with resistance, less impact on my knee. 
Typically lunges are tough on knees. When you put a resistance band behind you, less impact on the knee. Another training tip. Okay, now I'm gonna do something in reverse. Arms are here, I'm gonna do a pull. So I'm using my back muscles. I'm gonna move my camera just a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Okay, so I'm gonna find my line of pull. There it is, I can't go any further with that, right? So I'm gonna step back just an inch or two and I'm gonna pull and reach. So I can do a squat, lean back. My hips are over my knees, or my shoulders are over my knees. My knees are over my ankles. Let me show you from the floor how safely I can do a squat. Okay, you're not leaning over. You're literally sitting back in your seat. Okay, isn't that cool? Or you can do the opposite. You can pull yourself up, squat back. Pull, squat back. That resistance is gonna hold you up. And I've worked with big guys with resistance bands. Again, aerobic because big muscle groups are working. Okay, I'm gonna turn it around. I'm glad you like the tips. I'm here to help. Chest flies. So once again, I'm gonna find that long line, okay? I'm gonna step one foot forward. Maybe it's pulling me back. So it's a lot of core strength here. I'm opening my arms and then squeezing. I get a stretch and then I push into it. Now you notice I didn't bring my hands all the way together because I, I would lose my shoulder stability I'd be in my neck. I just want to work my pushy muscles. The pushy muscles are all on the side of the body. So I'm chuck, this is my chest fly. Hear me breathing? Super important. Get oxygen pumped into your muscles. Get rid of any metabolic waste in them. Okay, so that's my fly, right? Now I'm gonna go to a wide row. So I'm working the back of the arm here. I'm gonna go for a wide squat too. So I'm gonna squat back, ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, knees over ankles. And when I come up, I'm gonna pull. And I'm leaning back a little bit on this. Okay, so my back body is working. You can see I'm on a diagonal, I'm pulling my glutes are working. My rear deltoids, this is a full body exercise here. Or I can be very stationary on this. Pay a little squat and just do arms. Quads are stabilizers and glutes. Good thing I didn't do a lot of working out today because this is some work. When it comes to reps, quality, not quantity. When you start feeling fatigued, back off, stretch. Depends what your goals are too, by the way. Okay, so one more exercise here, and then I'm gonna move on. Triceps, because who doesn't want who doesn't want strong triceps, right? Let me move my camera up a little bit so you make sure you see my form. So what I want to do with the tricep is when I extend completely is when I'm hitting my tricep muscle. So I'm gonna put my hands, my thumbs are touching together, or I can make this diamond shape right above my forehead. Okay, and I'm gonna push out and drive it out. Now this is tough, so I'm gonna step back a little bit. Okay, looking toward the floor, exhale. Now, if you want it easier, you use the orange band. You'll need a little more floor space for it. And there's your triceps. Or you come back, elbows at your side, and push down. And again, these are tough. So quality move, not quantity. And hit those triceps. Okay, I just had a full body workout in what? 15 minutes? <laughs> Time to stretch. Time to talk about the next product. So grab a sip of water and hang in here because I'm coming, moving into that. Um, Life Pro Swirl Yoga Wheels. So I'm gonna move my camera down. I'm gonna get rid of some of the stuff. I'm bringing everything down because we're hitting the floor, guys. Coming down. Do you have any questions on our Infinity Box Plus workout? Let me know. $299.99 is what we're talking about retail. Launch price, $199.99 on the Life Pro website. 
to get all those great pieces parts. I'm going to put everything aside here. I like to keep everything a little tidy. And now I'm bringing out a product I'm super excited. I remember when Joel was asking me if I had used the yoga wheel, and I'm like, yeah, I have. And he's like, well, we might do it. And he was right. They did it. Plenty of room to see me. So Life Pro and Joel and Abe, always thinking about how to move your body safely and effectively. We have our swirl. Now in 1978, a little, little history for you all. In 1978, a yogi named Dharma Mitri invented these wheels because he needed more flexibility in his spine. In his back primarily so that was really why they were invented and you know us creative yogis and yoginis and fitness people always find different things to you to, to do um, with our props catch debbie's replay of, of of this launch and she gave some great tips i love them thank you debbie some great tips on how to stretch typical stretches of your hamstrings and some really good stuff. And I, I'm gonna tap into a few of those stretches she did, but I'm gonna show you more yoga-like postures. Now in yoga, we call them asanas. So I'm gonna show you some asanas, some yoga poses. Um, but first let me tell you about this, the product. Price first, let's talk about dollars and cents. $99.99 is the manufactured suggested retail price. Launch price, $59.99. So very, very competitive to what's out there in the market. But you're getting three wheels. You're getting a 13 inch, an 11 inch, and a seven inch wheel. So the 13 inch wheel is five inches wide, 13 and a half in uh, diameter, would that be? Uh, and it weighs three pounds. The 11 inch, 11 inch round, five inch wide, it weighs two and a half pounds. And this cute little wheel, <laughs> I love this little guy, seven inches by two and a half and it weighs two pounds. So uh, most of the yoga wheels that I have worked with have cork on them. These, I'm gonna show you, uh, besides it being our Life Pro logo colors of blue and black and orange, right here's the, there's our logo in there. Here it is, there we go, okay. We've got the little graphic here uh, on this surface. Now it's not, it's kind of a rubberized, um, more of a evaded uh, foam surface. It's non-slip. And what I like about this, it provides more fascia release. And you know, in fascia, you're not sure what fascia means. It means uh, bundles or bands. And fascia connects all connective tissue. So it connects connective tissue connects muscles to bones, bones, ligaments, ligaments, tendons. It connects to that. It connects everything together. It's, I think it's like, kind of like a, I think of it as like a little spider webbing throughout the body, okay? When fascia is not moved, we become shrink-wrapped in our body. So think of that. If you were in the saran wrap and you're shrink-wrapped. So if you don't move in all different ways, you get stuck in your body. And it really um, keeps, it, as much as fascia holds the body together, Healthy fascia is flexible, supple, and it glides. When it's stiff and tight, that's when we're shrink wrapped. So these wheels will help improve your flexibility. They're gonna um, help you to open up your chest, your shoulders, and back. I'm gonna demonstrate that. It assists with challenging poses uh, that allows you to go deeper. I was able to actually go up into a headstand with this wheel without using a wall. I'm gonna try it again today. And oh, I hope that I'm not, when I'm on camera, I don't fall over, but I feel pretty good about it. Um, so it will relieve pain, um, it improves your balance and stability. And like all yoga practices, decreases stretch because we're breathing as we move in our body. We use, we balance our sympathetic and our in, uh, parasympathetic systems through the breath and the movement and the, the idea of being present. So we're gonna be present on the wheel. Okay, so let me start with some flexion and uh, extension exercises. 
how do you know what wheel to use? Well, it depends how tall you are. You know, if you're five foot or under, you want to use the smaller wheels. Um, if you're taller, you know, the 11 or 13. So it just depends on your height and your flexibility. If you're very inflexible, don't go for the big guy just yet. Um, I wasn't always that flexible, truly. I'm more flexible now at 64 years old than I was at 44. And it's been a practice and it's been my career to move and to teach people how to move. So I'm grateful for that. So I'm going to start with the, the yoga wheel behind my back. And you see I'm holding the wheel. And be careful with your head placement here. A lot of people throw their head back. There's a relationship between your neck and your pelvis. So you want to honor that relationship, okay? So I'm going to start walking back. And I'm holding the wheel. I'm starting to feel my spine respond to the pressure of the foam. It's like a nice little spine massage, my lumbar spine. I got to tell you guys, this feels really good, okay? And with every move I breathe, I'm going to take an exhale and inhale. I'm going to realign myself and get a little offset on my neck, okay? Line up feet, knees, hips, super important, guys. I'm going to always tell you about postural alignment. I'm going to push off. I'm going to go a little further, and now I'm going to take my hands behind my head. I'm going to drop my head back, and I'm going to lift up. I'm going to work a little core here, supporting this flex extension and flexion. I'm warming things up from a back bend. I'm just not going right into a back bend. My head is supported. I'm not jamming my chin. I'm just supporting the, your head. You've seen it in my yoga um, lives for Life Pro. I've told people. Your head weighs anywhere between six to eight pounds. So we don't want to jam the head. We want to honor the bowling ball on our head. Now I'm going to go back down and back up. Depending on your knee flexibility, okay? But feet are planted flat and I'm massaging. So I'm going to take it further now. I'm going to go back and now my head's going to go back. And I'm going to come back down. I am easing into this. I'm not just going right for it, okay? Breathe in, exhale back. Now, eventually, the top of my head is going to rest lightly on the wheel around the floor. And there's my back bend. I could never do this on my own to have the support. Okay, then I'm going to come back and support my head and come back. And there you have it. So that was just an idea of back bending to get a supported back bend. We can go through a lot more of it, but again, I'm giving you a taste of this. Now we're going to go into a Bit of flexion work. If you have tight quads, you may want to sit on a wheel and then put both hands on a bigger wheel and reach up. So that way it's not so much knee flexion, okay? Because I have support of my pelvis. If it allows you to come back to your seat, to your heels, to your hips to your heels, you can come out and press out. So you get the beautiful lengthening of your lats with the support of the wheel and you work through it, okay? So that's our flexion extension. You get to just go deeper and deeper. Now side bending is another way. Our spine moves in different directions, flexion, extension, side bending and rotation, okay? So I'm gonna show you a little bit of all of that. So side bending, I'm gonna give you a couple of different options. You can sit cross legs to start, and we'll just take the arm out and reach up. I wanna keep my hips anchored. So I'm just gonna karate chop that, and my hand is in front of my shoulder. Most people don't realize the angle of your shoulder is not straight up, it's a slight, slightly forward, then my shoulder can drop in its socket. Okay, so I'm gonna just take it over, a nice little stretch. Be very careful the head doesn't come forward. Often I have my clients put their hand behind their head so the ear is in line with the shoulder and I can come back up. Again, alignment is everything, guys. So it's a nice stretch. So that's one way to stretch into your side bend. We can go a little deeper, okay? I'm gonna put my knees in like a, a kind of a zigzag. It's known as deer pose. I'm gonna put the wheel into my rib cage. I'm gonna drape myself over and then stretch over and grab the hand and just get a nice big stretch. Intercostal muscles opening up. You can put your hands behind your head if you need to and you can straighten this leg out and start lifting up and over. 
Now I'm really put a lot of pressure in that foot to support this side bend. And then bend the knee and come back down. You can counter it by reaching up and over. Oh, it feels so good. So I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna go to the other side because I don't wanna be lopsided today. Okay, I'm gonna take it over and then back in. Now, we'll go to the other side and I'm gonna show you how cool it is to be able to do a side plank. Side planks are often very difficult for people with shoulder issues. And I say that air quotes kindly because you know we all have issues in our tissues and on different days the issues are different, right? So here we go. I'm gonna side bend into it. I'm gonna push out, have both legs go straight. My elbow is right under my shoulders. I can stack, put my hand behind my head, line up my head, line up my arm. I can lift my leg. I can add on to this and do a little bit of strengthening on one side as I stretch and strengthen. So a lot less pressure on my bottom shoulder. And that's my side bending. Moving along this, speaking about core strength, we're gonna talk about how you can do planks and other things a little more intense. Now, this is some of the steps not beginner. So I'm kind of showing you seasoned yogis and yoginis that this is a great tool to assist you in some of these moves. So for a plank, what I wanna do, I'm gonna put my knees and shins on here. So I've gotta find some balance first. And this in itself will be difficult. So I'm finding my balance here, and then I'm gonna walk my hands out. I'm gonna walk my, walking out, 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 and then there's my balance. So I'm in a plank, right? A very narrow plank. You can hold that, you can take one leg off, or you can just be a three-legged plank, and make it a lot tougher as I come off my wheel. Okay, I can bring it on, and I can add myself into a pike, and back out. Nice, easy little pike. And back out and come down. Whew, that's some pretty intense stuff. So just again, a few little ideas about core strength. Um, hip openers, big time in yoga, hip opening. And we store a lot of tightness, tension, lower back. So the wheel really helps when it comes to that. Um, you might be familiar with the posture known as bridge pose. This is when this it's good to have this little guy out. Um, I'm going to demo this one quickly and, and take a little break and tell you about a few other things about this product. Okay, hips up. I'm going to put this wheel under the hard part of my pelvis, okay, the sacrum. Now, when you're doing any of the uh, exercises where your head and shoulders on the ground, what I don't want you to do is turn your head. I may turn my head to look at the camera to make sure I'm in good um, in good view, but it's really important that you keep your eyes looking over your chest. Your elbows are your kickstands or your hands press the floor and you come up. So this is one way we can adjust into our bridge pose. We can anchor here and that just opens up chest and hips. You can stretch your legs out straight and that's an amazing stretch for your hip flexors and your lats. Supported bridge pose. We can take it a little further, bringing the legs back to tabletop. I can actually work my core here. I can do some Pilates work here, working my abs and my glutes. I can do my little scissors here. I don't have to hold on to anything except my elbows on the floor. I might want to challenge myself later and not hold on to the floor. Or I can keep my heels to the sky, my butt on the, on the wheel. This posture is known as legs up the wall, or vritti karana, a beautiful posture to help with the organs of digestion and elimination. It's a very adaptive pose, so if you're super tired, this posture, if you hold it for three to five minutes, will give you more energy. If you want to sleep and you can't, three to five minutes in this posture will help you calm down so you can sleep. So it's a great posture depending on what you need it for. One of my favorites. We're gonna come off of this. We're gonna push into our toes, lift and come back down. Then you just bring your knees to your chest to counter that posture and roll up. Okay, a little more into the hip openers. We have um, a pretty cool pose here. I'm gonna go back to the 
13 inch uh, wheel. And I'm gonna do what's called Crescent Warrior B, where I'm sitting my pelvis or my sits bone, left sits bone on the wheel, light pressure on this knee because all my weight's here. And then I can go into my posture, opening up the chest and getting a really nice knee bend. And there's no stress on this knee, and very, very little stress here, but here's my opening in my chest, my arms up. That's the Crescent Warrior B. I can take it a little further by lifting my leg up and putting the uh, wheel against my front, the front chin and hold it there so I can have a supported Crescent Warrior A and just gives me something to hold into. It gives me some stability here. Now, furthermore, I can go into a hamstring stretch by pushing my back of my knee and my shin into the wheel and lean into it for pyramid pose. I'm going to hold on to that wheel as the slide. And then drop down and get a nice hamstring stretch. A little bit of balance in that. So that really feels great on the hamstrings. Support behind the knee joint. And I can go deeper into my pose. From here, I can go into lizard pose, another favorite of mine. So I'll go to, I'll try the other side. So in lizard pose, the hip that's going to open is pushed in to the wheel. The other knee is going out to the side. Oh, actually, I should show this way. Oh, I'll show it to you this way. I make sure you can see the benefit of this pose. So I'm in some, I'm leaning into it. My front knee is going to go out to the side. So I'm opening the right hip and the left hip flexor, and then I can come down. And I get all the support I need without any pressure on my wrist. I'm really light on my fingertips. So those of you that can't put a lot of pressure in your hands, the wheel assists you to go deeper. That's my lizard pose. And then, of course, one that helps us really open our hips is Velasana. It's known as garland pose as well. Yogi squat, if you will, but no pressure on the knees. Weights in the pelvis, and I can open up my inner thighs. I can do a stretch on either way, just to get a little more of that whole line laterally, or I can go deeper into it and hit my back. One uh, very uh, common hamstring stretch and hip opener is called Pasarita Podhitanasana, which is a wide leg forward fold. And in that one, my yoga wheel stays under my shoulders while I hinge for my hips. I get a good hamstring stretch, my back, the weight of my torso is supported with the wheel itself. So I don't have to worry about too much pressure in my lower back while I get the stretch. This same stretch or posture, asana if you will, can be done on the floor by having the legs wide and putting my hands back up on the wheel. It supports the weight of my torso. I don't have to slouch. I have something that lifts me up. And then once I'm in my good alignment, I can roll out and go deeper into the pose with a nice long back. I don't, I don't run my back. I, I have the support of the wheel as I do this. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, guys, I'm only gonna be on for a couple more minutes. Um, I want to show you a few more poses, but I need to show you one more thing because I would be doing you such a disservice if I didn't show you that Life Pro also gives you, I'm going to have this laminated because I don't want to ring up the yoga wheel workout. It shows you postures. You, you saw this one that I did. The, with the 13 inch wheel um, shows you the balance. Well, I didn't do my feet on there, but the balance one. It shows you what wheel to use in all these different postures. So it's a great reference sheet. So that comes with your, your swirl yoga wheel set. I'm gonna show you a plow pose and then I'm gonna finish with my Grand finale, my back bend, okay? So plow pose, another great spine exercise. We're gonna lay on the floor. You're gonna bring your feet up and the yoga wheels at my butt. I'm gonna lift my butt, I'm gonna roll up, 
up my spine. I'm going to hold my wheel. I'm going to hold it at the side. I think I'll hold it right here. And then I'm going to drop my toes back. I can wiggle up a little bit more and get this in my back and hold on and really lengthen out and reach my toes over my head. The wheel supports my spine. I can add on and do a little bit of single leg control balance. This is a Pilates move. So Joe Pilates, by the way, stole everything from yoga. So many of the poses we have are very much in, in Pilates from the yoga practice. And then I can always ultimately go in to my back bend once again. And there's a beautiful bigger back bend than I can ever do on my own because I've lifted off the floor, 13 inches off the floor. So to come out of it, I'm gonna roll forward and down. Okay, last but not least, guys, I know it's Friday and you wanna get off of Facebook or Instagram. Maybe you're watching this later. We're gonna go for a headstand. So normally I do them against the wall, but today what I'm gonna do is put my head down. I want my I'm not sure the right wheel. Yep, it's the right wheel. I'm putting my back against the yoga wheel. One leg comes up, the other leg comes up, and I'm in my full headstand. And I'm telling you the truth, I couldn't do this without the wheel. I would have to be against the wall. Come down and up. Voila. <laughs> that was so much fun. So, folks, Life Pro friends, family, if you're new to Life Pro, welcome. If you're a seasoned Life Pro family member, I hope you enjoyed these new products that we've launched today the Infinity Box Plus Workout Home Gym and the Yoga Swirls. Catch them before they're gone because sometimes this stuff sells out really fast. And let us know if you have any questions on any of the products. If you want some videos, let us know. We'll bring them on. We have a full library on YouTube of our products. Amber's done a great job of demonstrating how to set things up. But again, you can have your home gym, 13 pounds, the infinity box. You can have your wheels for flexibility, strength, and balance. Life Pro, you know, they are always finding uncovering solutions and uh, for, to help you rediscover how to move your body the way it was designed to move. Once again, Roseanne Zaff from Scottsdale, Arizona. Thank you so very much for joining me today. Have a happy, healthy weekend, and I wish you a very happy, healthy New Year as well.